Okay, Paul, we are live on Facebook and Zoom. Please take it away. Okay, great. Well, good evening, everyone. I'm Paul Gullickson, uh, Communications Manager, Manager for the County of Sonoma. Uh, before we get started, we have a brief message for our Spanish-speaking members of our audience. We good. So we are broadcasting this um, in in Spanish simultaneously. Uh, we appreciate you all being here for this community briefing. The purpose tonight is to hear updates on the status of the fires and to allow you, the members of the community, to pose questions to our elected leaders and to those on the front lines of this incident. To do so, we would invite you to submit your questions via Zoom, Facebook comments. You could leave them on Facebook as part as this is being broadcast Facebook Live, or by sending your questions via email to publicaffairs at sonoma-county.org. That's publicaffairs at sonoma-county.org. We have staff members uh, ready to be consolidate those questions and we are able to uh, field questions in Spanish as well. So we also would, uh, we, we would we'd like to welcome all of our panelists today, particularly um, Congressman Jared Huffman, State Senator Mike McGuire, and Assemblyman Jim Wood. Um, and we will be hearing from all of them a little later, later but thank you for being here. But first, uh, we'd like to hear from our uh, fire, lead fire officials to provide a situational update and we will begin with Cal Fire Division Chief, Ben Nichols. Ben. Yeah, thank you for having me this evening. So my position is currently running the West Zone fires here in Sonoma County. My two fires are the Wallbridge Fire and the Myers Fire. The fires this evening, update on those fires. The Myers Fire uh, is holding well with inside its lines and we are not anticipating uh, any major fire growth from that fire overnight. The Wallbridge fire is continuing to burn as it has been burning the last several days. So we had a, a lull in activity during the day here. Uh, however, the winds are picking up a little bit on the ridges right now. And so the fire is, is uh, pushing down deeper into the Mill Creek drainage as anticipated and down into the Armstrong Valley and testing the line at uh, Sweetwater Springs Road. We have firefighting resources on the line. The Wallbridge fire is the priority fire for the entire LNU lightning complex. And so we have been afforded all the resources that could be spared to bring our fire under control. We had quite a showing of uh, air tankers uh, this afternoon, including the 747 and the, and the other very large air tankers. Uh, that we're working to secure the heel of the fire so that it doesn't come down any more than it has to into the upper Dry Creek Valley. They were able to extend retardant from Lake Sonoma down to the existing line of the Wallbridge fire to join the two fires together so that we didn't have two separate fires running into the Dry Creek Valley. Crews are on the line, actively engaged in structure defense on Mill Creek Road. Uh, but the fire is continuing to do what it has done the last several days and the report. Okay, we now go, um, we'll go to our uh, uh, Cal Fire Statewide Incident Commander, um, Sean Cavanaugh. Oh, good evening. Thank you for having me this evening. So my name is Sean Cavanaugh. I am the incident commander for Cal Fire Incident Management Team 2, and uh, we are in command of the uh, Lightning, LNU Lightning Complex. What I'd like to do here for a little, little bit of support, and I'm going to take some time to uh, discuss the overall uh, view and uh, the situation we have here between the, the five counties that we're, that we're operating in. And to begin with, I'm just saying that out loud. That's, five counties. We have five counties that we, the Lightning Complex is 
impacting. Uh, we have very large fires uh, in, in, in different, different parts of the counties in all five of those. And what I'd like to do is we'll start out with the information that we put out every, every morning and every evening. We give us the updates on resources and acreages. Um, what I'm going to give you this morning or tonight was the, the information we had this morning. There's been significant growth all over the entire complex, including the Wall Bridge fire today. Um, as of this morning, we had a, an estimate of 131,000 acres. Uh, it's, it's probably doubled today. Uh, we have our, our, uh, our mapping flights take place at night, so we get an accurate uh, mapping during the evening hours. Uh, I do expect significant growth in the acres. Um, as, as we move forward, uh, overall in, uh, what I'll do is run down. We had, we had multiple fires that started from the light wave that took place. And so up in Napa County, we had the, the Hennessy fire, the Gamble fire, the Green fire, the Markley fire, the Spanish fire, and the Morgan fire. Those have all burned together. Um, and then we had the fires over in Sonoma County, which were the Wall Bridge and Myers. Yesterday, we had new fire starts as we did on Tuesday when we, we took command of the incidents. We had the Aetna fire that took off yesterday and then also the Round fire, which is up in Lake County. Um, as, as we move forward, uh, the resource pool that we have for the majority of um, the incidents is slim. There is multiple large fires burning in multiple counties throughout the north, especially the South Bay uh, and North Bay counties. There's large incidents down in San Mateo Snow Cruz. There's large incidents, large incidents in San Benito Monterey, a large incident in uh, Santa Clara and, and up here. We have six statewide teams, CAL FIRE teams that are made up of not only CAL FIRE personnel, but law enforcement and local uh, folks from local agencies throughout the state on these teams. All 16 are employed. Um, and with that today, the last team we had was team five that had not been activated because most of the folks were, were out on other incidents. Um, we were fortunate enough last night and today to actually get some of those team five members that we integrate in with, with us today. And I'm gonna make a, I'll get on an important point that we're gonna make with that because we got those folks up here strictly to help with Sonoma County. Um, as, as moving forward tonight, um, as we said, the Walbridge fire is, is making a significant push on us. Uh, I know the area of Guerneville is a concern uh, order over there as well. As we move forward in uh, weather it is going to be a factor um, in the next, the next we're, we're hoping we get that coastal marine wear that can take place over there to help us at night when we have the immediate recoveries come up, it allows us to, uh, it'll dampen the fire activity. Um, and that's a benefit when we have that take place. But on the downside of things, that's 24 to 48 hours, there's a possible windshield that is going to take place, and that will be from the south to southwest. That will have a direct impact on the Wall Bridge fire. Um, there's a moisture track that is, that is moving through from hurricane. I believe there's a hurricane that, uh, that is that's possibly coming through. With that, there is conversations again about uh, moisture moving up through the, the coast and with that it could be dry and then once again that's a possibility of lightning. Uh, we're looking at as possibly next Sunday and Tuesday. The, um, the forecast for that is still moving up there and there, there are all the, the weather folks that we have assigned are still uh, following that track as well. Moving over to the wall bridge and for you guys as what we did today is we, we, we reorganized how we've been doing things. So once again when we're management team but we're, we're in five different counties um, and so geographically we have a large area that we were that we're based the base campus here out of Calistoga we have a larger area that we're that we're dealing with just one of these incidents is what we call a type one incident we're a type one team so one of these incidents would be a team activation um, the fires that are Lake County this team was on on the Rock and Juice Room in 2015 and 14 those are themselves a, a type um, so that's the kind of magnitude of where we're at. But for today, what we've done is reorganized. We have folks that we are uh, implementing in, in, uh, for operationally, not only operationally, liaisons, logistically for Sonoma County. The resource pool for aircraft or all resources, and that is personnel, is very thin and very stretched throughout the entire state. 
Um, there's, there's fires in almost every county, uh, large fires. That being said, we are, we are the number one priority uh, of all the fires, um, this, the Lake Napa uh, LNU Lightning Complex. So that includes all of us. The resources we do have, a lot of those resources have been out on the line from the very beginning since it started. What we're doing today is trying to get people in, which uh, we've got to get a balance for our daily shifts that we have. We got to get some people some rest. Uh, we had to pull people in today to get a balance for every day for those shifts that we, we do have. Um, when we do the big operational briefings here in the morning, uh, I'll just give an example is on a large incident, we should have lots of divisions uh, assigned to it. What I mean by a division is somebody who runs a geographical part of the, the incident. This morning for this entire complex, we had one division and that's a supervisor on the line. Um, the same with engines and aircraft. There's always questions about aircraft and how those are utilized. Aircraft are fixed wing or released every night and we put those requests to have them come back into the incident every day. IA fires throughout throughout the state, which is a attack fires, take priority. So if we have an incident, this has happened this afternoon here in Napa County, um, if we have a new incident that takes place, we've got to pull resources to help try, try to contain that fire as a new start so we don't have that grow into um, a, another big problem. Had that happened here this afternoon where we ended up shipped in three air tankers, builders and crews and engines to, to a fire down here in Napa County and we got it contained luckily because uh, that would have been another whole issue that one would have got, got going as well. So the resource pool is, um, is difficult. We're used to in these areas, uh, in Sonoma, in Napa, in Lake County, in Yolo County, as long as we're used to having lots of resources. Uh, the communities out there are used to seeing that as well. All the elected supervisors are, um, uh, are used to seeing lots of resources. I'm used to having lots of resources, and right now it's, 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 it's hard. So we're trying to share resources between all these large incidents that we have. Um, as we move also evacuations and repopulation. Evacuations are extremely important. Uh, we're trying to stay on top of those evacuations. What I do ask is to the public, if you have an evacuation order, please leave. What happens is if we don't leave in, or you come back in, you're putting possibly putting your life at risk, and then you're also putting the lives of the law enforcement officers and the fire personnel who have to come back into those areas if you become entrapped. Um, we've had reports of that um, over the last couple of days. Uh, we've had evacuation orders and people aren't leaving or people are coming back in. And when there's a fire impact, um, that's causing an issue. So, so please everybody um, adhere to those orders. You don't have to, you don't have to evacuate. Order. If you feel, if you feel like there is a, um, a possibility for you leave or if you're feeling uncomfortable, please have your have your home secured, have your stuff packed, and have your belongings that you need uh, to be safe. And, and that's that's all we're there. Uh, you Thank have, you, Commander. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Um, so uh, we're going to save questions for the end, but um, I think for, for more on the local situation, we're going to go to Santa Rosa Fire Chief Tony Gosner. Chief. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, my name is Tony Gosner. I'm the fire chief for the city of Santa Rosa. I also serve uh, as the operational coordinator for Sonoma County, which is a liaison between OES and, and local uh, government equipment. I'll tell you, you know, you heard a lot of the uh, resource uh, being thin through uh, Mr. Cavanaugh and Mr. Nichols, and I'm here to reinforce that. Uh, Sonoma County is part of Region 2. It, it goes all the way up to Del Norte, all the way down to Santa Cruz. There's 16 counties in Region 2, uh, and there's fires in every, almost every county uh, with a lot of major fires in multiple counties. Our region alone uh, has put out uh, 20 strike teams to the various fires up and down the state. We had equipment out before the lightning siege came through. Uh, we all know when the lightning came through and the fire started popping up. Uh, so we have uh, at least 20 strike teams out to various fires, as well as probably close to 65 uh, people that uh, incidents uses overhead. Um, so Cal Fire, whenever there's an incident or federal government or local government for that matter, if they need 
uh, overhead like divisions as, as uh, Mr. Cavanaugh was saying, and they, they pull on local government to fill those holes. So we've got a lot of resources out of region two and we rely on region two as our closest resource to help us. There's just no resources. Um, some of those resources are, are at our fires, the Hennessy, the Wall Bridge, uh, and a few others. Uh, but in addition to uh, the OES equipment, uh, we also have probably close to 15 or 16 strike teams and task force from Sonoma County within the county that is also helping staff the Wall Bridge uh, fire and others uh, that we have a couple strike teams out at the Hennessy because uh, that was going before our fire. Uh, but it is, I guess what I'm trying to say is there, there's no more equipment out there. You, you've heard it probably for three days now. There's no more equipment out there. The people that are on the line have been out on the line since it started. They are still out there. Um, it's a very difficult situation uh, when you don't have crews that you can rotate in. So we're asking people when you get downtime, take a five minute nap, make sure somebody's awake. You're not fighting fire all the time. You got to get some rest. You got to drink water. You got to eat. Otherwise, you're going to get sick. You're going to become dehydrated. You're going to make bad decisions. So we're going to be in this pattern for probably another two days, three days is what I'm guessing. And that goes not only for the engine companies, that goes for the incident commanders, that goes for uh, the divisions out there it goes for a lot of people that are, are, are running resources at home. I know throughout all of Sonoma County, the fire departments have given a lot of equipment more than they're ever used to, to make sure that the, the river area has what they need while we're trying to balance the needs back home. Uh, so with that, I'll, I'll leave it there and we'll move on. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, chief. I now want to just uh, cut to uh, Paul Lowenthal who has some updates for us on the acreage. Paul is the uh, assistant fire marshal for Santa Rosa Fire. Paul? Hey, good evening. I also have the unique opportunity to work as the public information officer uh, and work closely with team two uh, here on the Sonoma County side of the incident. Uh, so we did just learn this evening that the overall complex is now at 215,000 acres. Uh, the wall fire, the wall bridge fire uh, has now included the Skaggs fire is currently at 20,000 acres and 0% contained and currently the Myers fire is still holding at 3,000 acres. Uh, as Chief Kavanaugh stated earlier uh, with team five here, uh, we'll have additional public information officers working to meet the needs uh, for the county of Sonoma and working very closely with not only the board of supervisors, but the county itself. Uh, as well as other uh, various officials here, making sure that our community's interests are met uh, from a public information standpoint. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. We, we appreciate all of you being here. We hope you um, can stay with us for, we're gonna have get to some questions a little bit, but first we wanna hear from some of our uh, uh, elected officials. Um, and I wanna introduce uh, uh, our chairwoman, Susan Gorin from the Board of Supervisors, Susan. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. It seems like almost yesterday that we were here three years ago with our great firefighters and state elected and local officials uh, with tears in our eyes after the Tubbs and the Sonoma Complex fires. And here we are again, three fires in four years. Uh, thank you to all of the folks at our Emergency Operations Center and all of the great firefighters that are out there trying to control the fire, protect structures, and make sure everyone is evacuated safely. If you have lost a house or if you learn that you have lost a house in the future, please know that we are sadder but wiser and resilient. We have uh, incredible fire survivors, block captains, neighborhood captains standing ready to aid you in vegetation recovery and certainly help you navigate through your loss and all of the challenges lying ahead. I really want to thank especially Supervisor Hopkins, Supervisor Gore for the incredible communications they're putting out to the community and without further ado, I'd like to introduce Supervisor Linda Hop. Thank you very much. And I would like to start off by just sharing a little bit of re information about resources for our evacuees. If you are evacuated and do not have a place to go, please go to the temporary evacuation point at the fairgrounds. 
We also do currently have on-site shelter capacity at the fairgrounds, as well as need-based referrals to other services. Um, we also want to acknowledge that large animals can be brought to the fairgrounds, and we're currently hosting 78 horses on site, as well as 237 all other small animals. I'd also like to announce another opportunity that will begin starting tomorrow. It is not yet up, but um, in a partnership with Airbnb, they're going to be opening their open homes function, which will allow Airbnb users to actually open their homes at no cost to fire survivors, uh, fire evacuees. And so it will also allow anyone with a second home to register to become a donor on that system to be able to open their homes again to support fire evacuees. And they are starting with opening Sonoma County tomorrow and they may open throughout actually Northern California to provide an additional surge in room capacities and to encourage some neighborly behavior in our communities to try to help out those who need help. You know, I wanna take a moment to acknowledge the tremendous fear and anxiety that's present in our community right now. And I also wanna acknowledge that unfortunately I've heard some second guessing of some of the decisions being made by CAL FIRE. And I want to assure you that CAL FIRE and our local fire agencies are working themselves to the bone right now in our community's best interests. Sometimes the community doesn't see the context for the decisions that are being made. They might wonder why the plane wasn't flying as frequently over the community of Greenville this afternoon. That's because it was grounded for a time due to smoke and lack of visibility. And despite the statewide shortage of resources that you've heard about, firefighters are making heroic stands fighting for and saving homes. They have done that over the past 24 hours. There are some homes with burn marks all around them and yet the home is still standing. Our local firefighters this afternoon just experienced their third all call in as many days. Many of them haven't slept and yet I watched exhausted firefighters manning more than a dozen fire engines roll into the Guerneville Safeway parking lot to take aggressive preparatory defensive action for our lower Russian river towns. We also have amazing local talent. We have firefighters who know the contours of these hills better than they know they, they know the backs of their own hands. And they know the strange little winding roads that you know hardly anybody else does. I'm not gonna ask Chief Nichols how much he has slept. Um, I saw Chief Turbeville and I know that he had only a couple hours over the past several days. Um, and I also wanna acknowledge that I've, I've heard a number of times Chief Nichols referred to as a gator because I believe he went to Guerneville Elementary School. I don't know if we got that right. Um, I also wanna acknowledge the sacrifice of our firefighters. And I ask that we all sacrifice a little bit, start by being kind to one another, by evacuating when we are told to evacuate, by offering support to those in need. If you have a second home, if you have a granny unit, if you have a spare bedroom, consider participating in Airbnb's open homes program. And I also uh, want everyone to trust that everyone is working 24 seven right now to save our towns, to save our homes and to keep our community safe. Back to you, Chairwoman Gorin. Thank you so much. Uh, Supervisor Gore, are you with us tonight? Uh, I'm not hearing, am I on? Yeah, I think he uh, is going to join us late, so we can we can go to him when he when he joins so us. Supervisor Gore, if you're, uh, if you're there ready for him now. There he is. There he is. There he goes. Well, I'll keep my eyes on the road. I apologize for being late. I just got, uh, been spending most of the time in the fire zone. Uh, my, my love and appreciation to the colleagues and the firefighters who are out there. Uh, there's a lot of homes that we've lost up on Mill Creek, uh, down towards Sweetwater Springs. There's a huge amount of danger uh, in the areas uh, directly east of West Dry Creek Road, uh, West Side Road, uh, and onward. It is a, um, it, it's, it's, it's extremely difficult terrain. I want to back up. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about the resources that are on the ground and uh, the ones how much more we need. But I also want to stress that uh, this terrain and the amount of fuel that's out there is extremely difficult. Um, it is, it, there's a lot of people exasperated. They're looking for uh, a, a, a big savior to come in and uh, in all the planes to save the day. But the reality is, is that uh, we're going to be in this for a long haul. Um, I, I just want to stress uh, there's been a couple areas, uh, Hillsburg currently uh, in my district is set for uh, evacuation warning already. Uh, that is not an evacuation order at this time. Um, Cal Fire and local law enforcement will make that determination ultimately, but people can expect that if this fire gets down to uh, close to West Dry Creek Road or uh, West Side Road, that uh, Hillsburg, including me and my house, uh, that we're going to have to be evacuated. I want to take it as an opportunity to uh, uh, to talk about what you can do as individuals, uh, because as much as we all have frantic energy, 
uh, we can be doing work. Uh, we can be making sure we look around our houses. We can be make sure, make sure that we have plans. Uh, we can make sure that we have our important documents uh, and we can do work in prepping our houses before we leave. Um, today, my wife and I spent a good portion of uh, four to five hours uh, getting our personal belongings, uh, moving everything that's flammable away from our house, taking the screens off of our windows, uh, and also um, putting sprinklers on our roofs and, uh, and doing the work that's needed to be done. Um, also, uh, you know, I'm in a situation where we've, uh, we've increased the uh, regulations around uh, vegetation management around houses. Uh, for me this year, living in a rural residential neighborhood, with neighbors uh, just on the, uh, the east and west of me with significant timber. All of us got visits from uh, Sonoma County uh, Fire Marshal and our officials this year. And uh, just like I'm not just a policymaker, none of us are. Uh, I had to spend uh, hundreds of hours and thousands of dollars along with my neighbors uh, to clean that up. So uh, I just want to encourage everybody to take whatever action it is, even if that is just checking in with your friends and your neighbors uh, and your uh, any acquaintances you have, to, because do not assume that all of this communication gets to everybody. Uh, we blast we alerts, we blast Nixel uh, alerts out, uh, we put websites up, we do virtual, uh, and then we also send out emails and the press is there. But I'm shocked at how many people really still uh, um, don't see what's happening because it's very difficult with fragmented media cycle. So um, it's, uh, it's gonna be here for a while. I wanna thank everybody for organizing this and thank the firefighters for what they're doing. And uh, having just come off a property with, uh, with a dear friend, a, block, uh, a COPE leader uh, who uh, looks like he lost his home. Um, uh, he also, uh, I wanna just say um, to those who are worried about your homes right now, uh, continue to be in touch with us so we can help you check into those places. But understand that uh, this individual who is a leader for preparing his community, uh, even though he might have lost his home, uh, he helped prepare hundreds and hundreds of people uh, and set them up for success as well. So all of our efforts are not in vain. Thank you. And thank you. Please know that indeed we do have a network of survivors ready and willing to help you you can contact Rebuild Larkfield, um, contact Brad Sherwood for that information, or any of the supervisors. We've all organized block captains, neighborhood captains. We can help you through this. We've done this before, we can do it again. Thank you, Supervisor Rabbit, for being here. And I know that you will be available to answer questions later on. So let's move forward now with Sheriff Mark Essek, uh, who will talk about- it took me a while to get on because there were all kinds of uh, so I'm here too yeah okay thank you Supervisor Zane and if there are questions we'll go to you uh, so Sheriff Mark Essek uh, you're going to be talking about the evacuation coordination that's right uh, thank you for having me on tonight um, the Sonoma County Sheriff's Office is working side by side with our Cal Fire partners to determine the most appropriate evacuations. Um, and we are looking at the fire's path and people who are in the fire's path will most likely or are already are under an evacuation order. Uh, those that might be in danger are under evacuation warnings. Um, I would encourage the public to go to socoemergency.org to look at the evacuation maps to determine where um, they live and whether or not they are in an evacuation mandatory zone or a warning zone. Uh, we're trying to give you time to avoid traffic jams and panic. So we are going to be pushing out evacuation warnings uh, so people can prepare, pack their items and be ready to calmly and effectively evacuate areas once those decisions are made. Um, we understand that many people are scared right now, and this is uh, creating anxiety for many folks. Uh, we, we have 2017, we have 2019, and here we are in 2020. Um, so we understand that. And the Sonoma County Sheriff's Office is here to help people who are going through evacuations. We have numerous deputies in the field to answer questions and direct people to safety. Um, I think it's important to note that when your safety is at risk, the Sheriff's Office will come running to help you. We will be there to guide you to safety and point you in the right direction and answer your questions. 
Um, you can get those alerts um, through Nixle. Uh, you will also hear deputies in your neighborhood using the high low siren. The high low siren is an indication that your neighborhood is under evacuation. And we'll have deputies coming to your door and knocking on your door in many cases to alert you of evacuation orders. Um, and then you can follow us on social media uh, for follow-up information. Follow-up information is always great. Um, and that is mo more likely than not to be broadcast on social media. We're saving Nixle and SoCo alert for the actual notifications. And I know that is a big question on many people's minds. What should we be looking at? And I would encourage people to look at Nixle and SoCo alert as official uh, sources of information. <clears throat> And then just a reminder about evacuation zones. Evacuation zones are dangerous. Uh, we, they are evacuation zones because they have active fire in them. They have down power lines and there are utilities and trees that could be down. So we ask people to heed the evacuation orders, uh, get out of the area, stay out of the area so that uh, utility companies, fire agencies and public safety can get into the area uh, to handle the emergencies that are happening and fight the fires. Uh, we have many staff on duty right now. Um, the sheriff's office has asked for mutual aid. Uh, we've gotten mutual aid from our partners at San Francisco Police Department and the San Francisco Sheriff's Office. Uh, we have over 70 peace officers on the scene right now working uh, to evacuate people, give them direction, answer their questions, and to direct them to safety. Um, we are doing that 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So we have ample resources available and we have more available if we need them. Um, so my, my last comment is to make sure you check on your neighbors when you're evacuating or preparing to evacuate. As Supervisor Gore mentioned, it's really important that you are prepared, have your bags. Uh, we've been doing this for the last couple of years here in Sonoma County, unfortunately, but we are getting better at it. And um, I think many people are prepared. So please check on your neighbors to make sure they're as prepared as you are and take care of yourselves. That is the end of my report and I'll be ready to take questions later if needed. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff Essek. Uh, we'll now move to State Senator Mike McGuire followed by Congressman Jared Huffman and then Assemblyman Jim Wood. And thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you so much, Madam Chair, and good evening. I'm sorry I'm coming to you from my car. I'm in Lower Lake uh, as working with Sheriff Martin and Cal Fire on the encroaching fires here in Lake County as well. I want to take a moment to say thank you, Madam Chair, and to the County of Sonoma for hosting us tonight. And of course, to be able to thank all of the local and state firefighters who are busting their backs to be able to keep our community safe in these challenging times. I would like to be able to just do a very brief state update and then also talk about the depths in which the state of California is going to, uh, to be able to secure additional firefighting resources. Uh, as you just heard earlier on the Wallbridge fire, uh, as promised by CAL FIRE, uh, it was a big day in the air today to be able to continue to reinforce line, uh, to be able to try to stop that spread uh, of the fires and to be able to combine. Uh, as personnel and fire engines are being released on other fires across the state, uh, the North Bay, Sonoma, Lake, uh, as well as Napa and Solano counties, we'll start seeing additional engines and personnel arriving. Uh, those additional engines and personnel should start arriving this evening uh, and through the weekend. That is as personnel and engines are being released from fires uh, across the state. Uh, as you all know, the National Guard has also been activated across California. The National Guard is working in two different capacities even as we speak. Number one, the aerial unit uh, is working on providing enhanced aerial support uh, for water drops uh, via all of their helicopters. And we also have uh, hand crews, uh, 12 20 person hand crews, uh, excuse me, 20 12 person hand crews who have now been activated across the state and right here in Northern California, being able to reinforce the line. Finally, Madam Chair, I'd like to better talk about where the state is at in regards to securing resources. Uh, as you know, this state is uh, working with our partners across the nation, 
be able to secure, secure firefighters, both firefighters and engines, as well as additional hand crews. Uh, we're going as far out as New York and Michigan. Uh, several states have already committed to be able to bring in over 300 uh, additional engines and personnel. We're also looking internationally. I want to say thank you to uh, the nation of Canada, uh, and we're also putting a request out to the nation of Australia. Uh, they have come to our aid as we have come to theirs in the past, uh, and we are hopeful that we're going to look at international assistance to be able to combat what is now a historic lightning complex fire, not just here in the North Bay, uh, but throughout the state of California. And we look forward to continuing our unified partnership uh, with the County of Sonoma, with Congressman Huffman. I want to say thank you to him uh, for his incredible work, Assemblymember Wood, and of course to each of the branches of the fire service. Thank you, Madam Chair, for having us. Thank you, Senator McGuire. Uh, Congressman Huff Huffman, thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you, Supervisor Gorin, um, and good evening, everyone. I am here, I'll be very brief. I'm, I'm here to support all of you. Uh, first and foremost, I want to echo my government partners in expressing our collective thanks to these heroic first responders. Supervisor Hopkins did a great job of describing the conditions that they're working under right now. and just some of the, the remarkable heroic efforts that they're giving this community. We can't thank you enough for that. Our disaster planners, our first responders, frankly, all of the public officials and staff on this call, including my state government partners, uh, frankly, we've just got a lot of experts in fighting and protecting residents from wildfire uh, because we've gone through three of the last four years with these major terrible fires. It's not something any community ought to have to go through but it has given our disaster teams a lot of experience and skill, and we are grateful for that, uh, especially in this moment, because we're hearing tonight about how thin resources are stretched. So we may not have all of the resources we'd like, but the ones we do have are the very best. And I wanna thank all of you for that. I am here as always to pledge total support to my local government and state government partners in fighting these fires and to anyone in Sonoma County who is going through the hardship and the stress of evacuation as if we weren't already under enough hardship and stress from this pandemic. Uh, as your federal representative, I'm here to help. So if there is any federal issues that you have, whether it's a lost social security card or an immigration issue or trouble with the VA, anything at all, please do not hesitate to contact my office. The best number to do that is 415-258 nine six five seven and i also want you to know just one more thing uh, i am ready to move very quickly on supporting any request for federal assistance should the damage from these fires rise to the level of a major disaster we've become all too familiar with how that process works under the stafford act it starts with the county making an emergency uh, declaration a disaster request to the state the state then turns around and makes declarations and requests a major federal disaster and then uh, Congressman Thompson and I work shoulder to shoulder to make sure the White House and FEMA grant that request as quickly as possible. So I want you to know I've already been in touch with Congressman Thompson today, Sonoma County's other federal representative. Sometimes a fire hits in a way that both of our districts is impacted as it was in 2017 and last year. This year so far, the fires in Sonoma County are entirely in my district. And unfortunately for Congressman Thompson, he's got major fires in Napa County. So he's been called away to deal with that, but we are both ready to move into action. We have a letter already drafted, in fact, to make sure Sonoma gets its help as quickly as possible. And Congressman Thompson also asked me to pass along his thanks and his very best wishes to everyone. So stay safe, everyone. Fingers crossed for better conditions and limited damage from these fires. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Huffman, and we know we can depend on both you and Congressman Thompson for the help that we need at the federal level. Please know that the Board of Supervisors is meeting tomorrow afternoon at one o'clock virtually to have a fire update and to move to uh, uh, pass the uh, resolution of the declaration of emergency for Sonoma County. So indeed, we will be on the hunt and asking every one of you for the resources that we need to augment uh, what we have currently. Assembly member uh, Wood, are you there with us? Would you like to uh, have a few words? 
Yes, thank you so much, uh, Chair Gorin. And uh, it's always tough to follow Senator McGuire and Congressman Huffman and all of you amazing other electeds out there, but uh, I'll be brief. Um, you know, this morning when I got up, I, you know, I, I was uh, pretty discouraged, quite frankly. Um, information's been really difficult to get um, and uh, seeing the smoke in the air and um, has, been, has been really disheartening. Uh, but I will say the Nixle alerts have been really helpful. Uh, and um, as, the, as the morning wore on, I was able to go to the first cooperators briefing, which is a briefing uh, that CAL FIRE puts on, and it was in Calistoga, which is unusual for us to have to travel somewhere to do that. But, but I saw, you know, the, uh, the people that are gathered there are putting their, their absolute 100% effort into this, beyond 100%. Uh, many of the firefighters of there had been on for 50 plus hours already. And, um, and many will serve for 72 hours on the line. And this is, this is beyond heroic. This is, um, this is I, I, I've never seen anything quite like it. And so, so people who, who, who are worried and concerned about resources um, know that everybody out there, uh, everybody, whether it's um, law enforcement, high, you know, high, it's highway patrol, sheriff's deputies, you name it, everybody is giving their, their very, very, their most. And so, um, you know, we saw today too that, um, and we heard that commitment this morning that Sonoma County would would be a high priority, and it truly has become that high priority. We saw a lot more air support this afternoon. We'll continue to see more of that going forward. Uh, I want to be sure that people know that uh, you can reach out to uh, my office for if you have questions uh, specifically around issues related to the, to the state. Uh, and I know you can, as well as Senator McGuire, uh, we, we're here for you. Uh, we will continue to be here for you uh, for for as long as as long as it's needed. But uh, rest assured, the state is throwing everything they can behind this. I can never remember an incident where you had essentially you had the entire state affected. We had 11,000 plus lightning strikes, um, and uh, that led to tremendous number of fires. And we may still see more pop up. So. These are these are unusual incidents. So, so uh, just thank you for the opportunity to be here. Um, we are uh, I have, I'm honored to work with Senator McGuire, Congressman Huffman, and all of you uh, as we as we move forward through this very difficult time. So, thank you. Thank you, Assemblymember Wood. And now I would like to turn it over to Paul Gullickson, our Communications Director. And please note that Supervisor Rabbit and Supervisor Zane as well as uh, Supervisor Goran Hopkins are here to answer your questions, but we know that you're really going to want to hear from the folks in the Emergency Operations Center or on the front lines. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chair Goran. Um, yes, I, we're, in a, we're gonna go to questions now uh, from the public, and I just wanna remind everybody that they can leave questions by uh, posing them in our Q&A box here on the Zoom call or on Facebook. Uh, page or by email them to us directly at publicaffairs at sonoma-county.org. Um, we're going to start with a question which is uh, a number of people have, have uh, called in and uh, asked this question uh, or written in about this and it concerns Armstrong Woods. What is the state of Armstrong Redwood Grove and um, I'm gonna combine it with another question. Uh, are you at least cautiously, cautiously optimistic that the fire line can be held at Armstrong Woods? Who, who wants to start with that? Uh, Chief Nichols? I can start with that. So um, as we've talked about during this call this evening, while we are the priority fire for the complex um, we just don't have the resources to keep that fire out of Armstrong Woods. So the fire is currently backing down into the park. It is not a flaming front, uh, which we would see for a more devastating fire elsewhere that we're seeing on other portions of the fire. We hope it continues that way because obviously we don't want any damage that we don't have to have to Armstrong Woods, but we just didn't have the resources to hold it at the top of the ridge at Bullfrog Pond to keep it out of the park. So that's what's generated the uh, response from our local partners into the Guerneville area to prepare for structure defense, uh, possibly as early as this evening, due to the fact that the uh, fire continues to uh, chunk down the mountain and, and work its way towards uh, Guerneville property. So um, actually that leads to the next question. Um, 
which is how far away is the Wall Bridge fire from Rio Nido and what efforts are being made to keep it and protect, uh, keep it out of Rio Nido and Guerneville. We have uh, bulldozers trying to construct a fire line uh, from Sweetwater Springs up to Mount Jackson and back down towards West Side Road. We have, as uh, Chief Gosner said, some very dedicated firefighters out there that have been on the line for days on end trying to keep that fire contained on the north side of Sweetwater Springs where they can. Um, if the fire continues to advance over the top of Mount Jackson, that's going to push us into structure defense in Rio Nido proper. Okay, the um, next question is um, on the other side of the fire, on the easterly direction, with winds blowing directly toward Healdsburg and Windsor, how prepared should we be, as this is from a resident, how prepared should we be to evacuate? Is there anything being done to block the fire from reaching the towns or is more of the focus on blocking from going south? Uh, I think that's, um, yeah. So uh, basically the question is directed at what's being done to prevent it, the moving east and how prepared people should people be. So there's two critical portions of the Wahlberg, Wallbridge fire. Um, ultimately, both communities are just as important to us to keep that fire out of. So as it stands, um, there are uh, more resources in Division Delta, which is the Healdsburg side of the line, uh, because we have indeed uh, had structures destroyed up there to date, and we are continuing to battle the fire down uh, Big Ridge, Chemise, and Mill Creek as we speak. Uh, so there is active fire front in that area, whereas on the south end of the fire, it's made some specific runs, it's not the, the constant firefight that the, we've seen on the Division Delta side of the fire. So both divisions are the most staffed divisions on the fire. Um, which is our priority to keep that life and property value uh, as protected as we can. So no, no one community is more important than the other, but the firefighting resources that we have are on those two sides of the fire, um, which, is, which is the focus for our firefight. But it's one of the things that uh, Chief Gosner and Supervisor Hopkins talked about with the, the surge of the county resources, um, while we're lean on firefighting resources, our partners here across the county have come together in a united front to help protect the community of Burnville, Rionito, Hacienda, and the West Strike Creek Valley. Okay, thank you. Um, so we receive a number of questions concerning um, NICSL alerts. Uh, I have, here's one from a resident. I have not been receiving Nixle updates on the fires and evacuations like I have in the past. I thought it was just me, but a friend just asked me why, why we haven't been getting as many Nixle updates. Um, Sheriff, you wanna answer that or somebody else? Well, uh, I would be happy to weigh in and if others wanna weigh in as well. Um, it's important to make sure that when you sign up for Nixle that you enter your zip code uh, so that you can get those updates. Uh, you can always go in and adjust your Nixle settings so that you receive those updates. But I will, I will tell everyone who's listening tonight <clears throat> my concerns as sheriff. Two of our most important communication uh, towers in the West County are under threat right now. The sheriff's office and other communications companies such as cell phone companies have um, radio assets on top of Mount Jackson and at Myers Grade. Both of those um, sites um, are under fire threat right now. In fact, when I look at the current status of Mount Jackson uh, on my fire map, it indicates that our repeater site, <clears throat> which means all the other different uh, repeater sites on that mountain, which includes cell phones, um, has has succumbed to fire. So we are losing some of our communication assets in the West County due to this fire. And that is certainly unfortunate. So 
we encourage people to have multiple avenues of information, which would be SoCo Alert, our, our regular media partners here in Sonoma County, which would be radio and print media, um, to stay informed. Um, really, we want people using multiple channels to get information at this time because um, Nixel uh, is reliant largely on cell phones as are wireless emergency alerts. And uh, that can be uh, a problem during fire emergencies. Thank you. Um, here's another question. Uh, since we are such a shortage of resources, why can't we ask the National Guard and even military to help fight the fires in our region? Is that uh, one perhaps for our legislators or? Sure. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so the National Guard has been deployed in the state of California. Uh, nine National Guard helicopters are working uh, California wildfires even as we speak. Uh, there are also 20 12-person hand crews that are cutting fire line uh, across California. Uh, they were recently activated by the State Office of Emergency Services. Uh, and we are uh, also anticipating uh, additional assistance coming in. Uh, again, want to stress from additional fires as fire engines and personnel are being released. Uh, we'll start seeing, we being Sonoma, Lake, Napa, Solano counties, those counties that have been impacted by these devastating fires, we'll start seeing additional relief staffing coming in with engines uh, as engines and personnel are being released. Uh, and we're also seeking uh, national help. And we're going deep into the federal system to be able to secure uh, additional uh, engines and personnel. Uh, we'll start seeing arrival of uh, firefighters from Oregon and Washington and Nevada uh, here uh, over the weekend uh, as there is a significant mutual aid coming into the state uh, from the federal system. And we've also formally requested assistance internationally from both the nation of Australia as well as Canada. I assure you this is an all hands on deck effort. And I don't ever want to, um, I, I don't want to ever say that we're not uh, taking this seriously because the, here's the bat bottom line. The state of California has never faced such unprecedented fire conditions in recent memory. Uh, and it is going to take everything we have plus assistance from our state partners, plus assistance internationally uh, to be able to deal with the crisis that we currently have on hand here in Northern California uh, and throughout the South as well. Thank you, Senator McGuire. That uh, actually addresses our next question too, which is, uh, are there other fire agencies from outside the area coming in to help? And that certainly seems to be the case. Um, 100%. Terrific. I, and I'll just add, Mr. Golickson, uh, the State Office of Emergency Services and Chief Porter from CAL FIRE uh, have been on the phones themselves, uh, contacting uh, state agencies in other states across this nation. We're also determining what is the quickest way we are able to get additional personnel into the state. Uh, if you all remember during the Tubbs fire, the state of California actually chartered commercial jets to be able to go pick up firefighters in far-flung states. Uh, we are more than willing to be able to do that as well. Uh, again, Chief Porter, the director of CAL FIRE, he's in charge of all CAL FIRE operations, as well as Mark Ghirladucci, who is the director of the State Office of Emergency Services, are on the phones themselves, uh, calling their counterparts in other states, uh, ensuring that we are going to have the personnel needed to be able to combat these fires, not just now, but candidly, we believe in the weeks to come. Thank you. One, one general question, which we might, uh, it'd be nice to address, um, we're getting from several people is where is the fire going? We hear the winds blowing in different directions, but where is it headed right now? So the overall path of the fire, if you were to draw a line from where it started to where it wants to go, at this point is at the intersection of Sweetwater Springs and West Side Road. Um, Fire doesn't go point to point though. So the flanks, the flaming front alongside of those lines on either side of that center line are what are impacting uh, the Mill Creek area and, and now Kernville. 
but the two fronts are not burning in the same rate as I was saying earlier. So that allows us to spread those resources between those two sides. But if you were to draw a line on the map, at this point, the fire spread over the last several days has been in that direction, that southeast direction, burning towards that intersection, which leaves us lots of uh, irrigated agricultural land in the Russian River out in front of it. Have, have the uh, winds been strong enough to cause ember cast today? Uh, there have been reports of short range spotting, not like we've seen in the past wind event type fires that we've experienced during the offshore wind events. That's encouraging. We ha here we have a specific question. Can anyone provide an update on uh, what's happening in the Casadero area? Casadero at this point is is on the backside. So again, if you're drawing that line from the origin to the head of the fire, where the fire is burning towards, Casadero is on the lee side of that fire front, and so they're having a more uh, less intense fire, a backing type fire, um, because it's trying to push against the wind. Whereas the Mill Creek, Dry Creek Valley. Um, and at times, uh, Guerneville in the lower uh, river area there is getting the, the push for the main fire front. It, Casadero is, is a concern. Casadero is my home. Um, and we will have resources out there just as soon as we can get them there. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, here's a question that we might go to. Um, Emergency Manager Director uh, Chris Godley for uh, if if the Sonoma County there's some questions from uh, potential evacuees where can we go if the Sonoma County Fairgrounds is not open to evacuees? The fairgrounds is our primary temporary evacuation point. Individuals can go there, and we can look to see what kind of resources they might need. It might be just information. Maybe it's a referral for medical assistance. And if it is shelter, then we can identify which shelter resource is most appropriate. It's important to know we're doing our best not just to meet the needs of those that are fleeing the fire, but also make sure that everyone's safe and not spreading COVID-19. That's really one of our biggest concerns. And so the protective measures include making sure people are in the right shelter setting. And maybe it's a hotel room. Maybe it's a part of the large shelter that's already established there at the fairgrounds, but that's where we, basically want to work with each person one-on-one. -on -one. Great, thank you. Um, here's a question about uh, concern about the fires, uh, evacuation zones uh, south of the river. What kind of a fire break does the river provide? Chief Nichols, you're on mute. Ben, you, you're, you're muted. Sorry about that. Can you repeat the question, please? Ben, you're okay, muted. I think the Chief Nichols is trying to talk, but he's still muted. Uh, Supervisor Gore, the question is, what kind of a fire break does the Russian River provide? Oh, geez. Uh, not much when you have embers. Right. That's the big thing that we've all learned more and more is, is that uh, with these fires, I mean, having gone through uh, tubs, pocket nuns and Supervisor Gorn's district in Kincaid and into this is that what we think of how a fire moves as these firefighters have taught us is very different from what the reality is on the ground. Um, because when you have ember cast and these winds pick up, um, albeit these winds are much less than, uh, than what we've seen uh, in our past uh, two fires. Still, if you get a 20 mile an hour wind with uh, 30 plus mile an hour gusts, uh, you know, it, it's all where the embers go. So we've had a lot of people uh, give you an example in, after the Kincaid fire who said, I just don't know how the fire got here. And we had to look back at him and say, if you were out here, it's because it was raining fire. So it's very difficult to talk about fire breaks these days uh, with this kind of weather pattern. Uh, if we didn't have the wind, it'd be a different situation. Thank you, Supervisor Gore for looking out for me. I had a little technical difficulty there. Um, just uh, to reinforce the fact that uh, 
a fire break, the, the river, why the river is a fire break is that it gives us the opportunity for something that won't burn. Wildland firefighting is about cutting line around a fire to deprive the fuel, the fire of the fuel. And so the river is a natural fire break to go with the fact that the vegetation around the river is a more, uh, more moisture content than the surrounding hills because of its proximity to the river. And so it gives us a natural break that right now we don't have out in front of it. Okay, our next question. Our next question is a kind of a compound question. The first part is knowing that it's too, too soon to predict when, but what conditions will need to be satisfied before evacuees will be, evacuees will be allowed to return? What is the best case scenario for re-entry? I don't know, I'll, I'll answer that question. As, as far as it comes to evacuations uh, for the public, um, how we determine that when we do our repopulation is we have to feel comfortable with after we do an evacuation, we don't want to re repopulate and have to do a reevacuation. So we want to be very comfortable that we have good solid containment in the areas that we have the evacuation orders in to allow the public back in. With that is there's no chance of the fire coming back up and having to do reevacuation of that area. In conjunction with the evacu with the repopulation, we all have to, have, have to look at utilities in the use of the utilities for that area. Um, we can have a, a very, an area that we feel safe. There's not going to be any more fire danger or threat, but we also have to have those utilities back into those homes, and that's water, and that's electricity, and so forth. So those are the areas we start looking at on the maps, and, and, and those become priorities. As soon as we feel we are very safe in those areas, we'll start those repopulation um, orders. Great. Um, I, I, we've also been getting some questions from um, some of our senior citizens. They, they say that uh, trying to understand the evacuation zone maps is very confusing. Are there steps being taken to help people better understand the, the evacuation zones so they can be prepared? Oh, Chris, Chris Godley, Emergency Management, I could address that question. Uh, we've been working since 2017, of course, to really give our first responders better tools to deal with these sudden fire events. And for a large part of that is really just carving up the county into understandable chunks, zones, if you would, to make it easy for us to reference when a fire's out in the middle of nowhere, where do we want to evacuate folks? And so it kind of simplifies the process rather than creating those zones on the fly. To that end, a project had been undertaken primarily led by the sheriff in coordination with the fire agencies to do exactly that. And we were fortunate to have basically a prototype or draft map project completed this summer. And that project was immediately shipped off and make, is being made use of by the sheriff and Cal Fire to conduct evacuations. The zones are basically numbered and lettered. They really were intended originally for use by those public safety agencies. And when we communicate with the public, we want to make sure that we're addressing those zones, not just by their letters and their numbers, which can be confusing. We're also providing narrative descriptions of which each of those zones are, which streets are on the east and the north, or which neighborhoods are falling into these zones. So we're trying to communicate that level with the public, as well as with our uh, SoCoEmergency.org website and map. Uh, and it can be challenging. Uh, we are looking to, after this fire, make sure we can finalize those zones. And at some point, we hope to have them fairly semi-permanent so that people can know ahead of time which zone numbers to look out for. But I will tell you, every challenge we get, every fire, I should say, brings a new challenge. And it's important for people to be flexible, to pay attention to what's going on around them, and not just depend on a website or uh, one piece of information they may have received some time ago but really be aware. And when they receive these warnings and these notices, it's the direct communication that really counts during that time, uh, not necessarily the zone maps, but we will be working as part of our community preparedness program to really bring that information, especially into our more vulnerable communities. And, and if I could just add real briefly, thank you, Chris, for, for your comments. Uh, we have been working with the Department of Emergency Management and other fire resources in Sonoma County to to work on those maps. 
Um, it is a work in progress. We did rush out uh, the delivery of these uh, evacuation maps for this incident. Um, we had planned a much more robust public information campaign to prepare the public for these new evacuation zones that we hope to become uh, permanent where people can learn the, the evacuation zone they live in and be prepared. Um, as always, uh, Sonoma County throws us some curveballs, and we weren't quite ready for a full rollout of this program, but we have put out maps um, and it seems to be working well. I, I have heard some comments about the evacuation zones um, that they, they could be confusing, but I think it's important to note that not it's not just the zone that we put out in a graphical representation, but we still put out the boundaries of the zones, uh, such as streets or rivers or major geographical uh, areas to the public. And uh, this is uh, what we're working on towards the future with our fire agencies and Department of Emergency Management, where you will have a, a permanent zone number that you live in that you can become familiar with and understand. Um, like I said, unfortunately, uh, Sonoma County snuck up on us again uh, before we had rolled out our public education campaign. So it is a work in progress, but we are very happy with where it's gone so far. Um, thank, you. thank you, Sheriff. Um, we've been getting a number of questions related to maps. Um, and uh, the primary question is, uh, where's the best way uh, for people to track the fires? Is it on SoCo Emergency Map? I know we know Cal Fire has some good maps. There's just some a number of people who are wanting the best resource in order to track the progress of this fire. Any suggestions? Uh, this is Chris Garley at Emergency Management. I would certainly uh, suggest everyone make use of the SoCoEmergency.org website. Um, it's a very effective tool because it provides not just the map information, but a whole large level of information that people may need, need, to, need to be interested in. Um, for example, as we look at the website here, while I'm actually bringing it up live for you, uh, we're actually tracking both the fire as well as the continued response to COVID-19 where information is available. Of course, fire being more pressing for most people, uh, you can actually go here to socoemergency.org and it's in Spanish as well. And you can actually select the evacuation map. And the evacuation map is discusses and presents those evacuation zones that we spoke of, both for evacuation orders and warnings. And it also provides here, um, if you can see for those online, uh, heat map, heat dots, if you would, which kind of indirectly shows the progression of the fire uh, relative to these evacuation zones. It also indicates road closures. Uh, there's also the opportunity uh, that if you'd like, you can actually look at the fire by clicking on, for example, the fire camera network that is integrated into the system. And so that you can actually see these fires with the same vantage point as our public safety officials. Uh, we also put on these maps locations such as uh, our animal shelter or other shelter locations throughout the county. So in addition to situational awareness, we're also trying to provide a graphic immediate link for folks to get additional information that help them respond to the event. Thank you. Uh, that's that that that's great. Thank thank you thank you, Chris. Um, the next question is uh, for uh, sh uh, I think this should go to our sheriff again. Um, there have some questions about fears about looting. Um, from our evacuees. Um, some are saying they've heard some rumors about looting. Um, Sheriff, maybe you could help address that. Uh, certainly. So <clears throat> I have been asked this question several times today. Uh, the Sheriff's Office has not received any reports of looting at this time. And, I, and I, I think that people are concerned because we did see some looting during the Kincaid fire and certainly um, some looting in 2017. Uh, but as of yet, we have not received any actual reports of theft or uh, property lost. I can assure you that we have, uh, as I mentioned earlier, over 70 
uh, peace officers in the field right now in the evacuation zones that are patrolling. So if you enter an evacuation zone, uh, you can pretty much be assured that you will be contacted by a police officer or a deputy sheriff and questioned about what you're doing in that area. Uh, we certainly wanna be kind and compassionate to people who are in the area and they're evacuating. But if you're in the area and you have no business there, you will be questioned. And if you are involved in criminal activity, you will be arrested. So we continue to monitor the situation and we will take aggressive action if we need to. Okay, great. Um, I, I, here's a, here's a, a good question that we, we've received a couple, uh, the, the, several from in the area. People would like to do, so they are very appreciative of all that the firefighters are doing and they're asking, is there anything specific we can do to support the firefighters? I will, I will take that question. Uh, as it comes to volunteerism or yeah, donations, uh, what we'd like is we're the, the firefighters on the ground, logistically wise, we are self-supported and we, we appreciate anybody who looks at wanting to do donations or, or helping. Uh, but once again, like I said, we are logistically, we support everybody. What I'd ask is if you do have items that uh, you'd like to donate, and if we do have people who are displaced or have lost homes or their structures, please donate those to those agencies that uh, can help facilitate that to the people who are in need, who have lost homes or um, or displaced out of their homes is the best way for people to support. Once again, as the firefighters and first responders and law enforcement, we appreciate anybody who would like to, to donate, but uh, we, are, we are self and logistically supported. I think we might have lost Paul. Hi. Hi, this is Nita Freeman. I uh, think Paul stepped aside for a moment. Uh, so I will ask our next question, which is, um, how safe are we in Santa Rosa and Sebastopol? We're getting a lot of questions about outlying neighborhoods. You are safe in those communities at this point. It's something that is uh, weighing very heavily on myself and, and Captain Murphy and the Sheriff's Office and our partners. Uh, Healdsburg Fire Chief Jason Boas and I have been in constant contact about when to displace more people and so it's it is truly we we take this responsibility very seriously and especially during this current pandemic we don't want to cause any more harm to our folks that we're protecting than we absolutely have to so uh, santa rosa and sebastopol uh, are on the other side of the russian river and so we have avoided um, creating a much larger net like we did during the Kincaid, because ultimately this fire is more of a fuel-driven, terrain-driven fire with, a, with, with some in wind influence, but not like our wind events during our October fires. Okay, thank you. We've uh, been receiving many, many questions about the location of planes and how they're being used in the firefight. Um, can we talk about that a little bit? Sure, I mean, you, you have to be a little bit more specific, but as I mentioned earlier in our conversation, um, the aircraft today, um, you, there was discussion about uh, Guerneville. And so Guerneville was underneath uh, ports of the smoke column. And so it's not safe for the aircraft to, to fly into an area where they can't see the terrain in front of them. Um, but their most significant portion today was the portion for the Lake Sonoma tied into the existing wall bridge to make sure that we didn't have a second flaming front coming down into the Dry Creek Valley. Right. Thank you. Yes, that was the primary question was about the, the planes used in the wall bridge fight. 
Um, we have another question about our water system. We've had actually a few questions about this. People wanting to know if our water system is threatened. So um, perhaps Chris Godley, could you answer that one? Sure, it's a significant question. The um, Sonoma County Water Agency or Sonoma Water maintains a significant water production facility there along the Russian River, uh, kind of pretty close darn into where that fire might be headed towards Sweetwater Springs area. It is in the mandatory evacuation zone. Um, it's a significant piece of infrastructure, irreplaceable, and it is a fundamental and the single highest utility uh, concern we have had, and we've expressed that with CAL FIRE, and they're more than aware of that. Um, that water production facility serves the majority of Sonoma County, as well as Northern Marin, and uh, it's going to be a significant uh, focus for CAL FIRE and for public safety in general to make sure that remains intact. There's the potential that fire could disrupt electrical utilities in the area as well, not only just serving residents and customers, but infrastructure like the water plant. Uh, the water plant can still produce water on generator um, and keep the pipes charged as it were. But that's one of the reasons we're also asking everyone in Sonoma County to conserve water now. Make it easier for this system to produce and store the water we're gonna need over the next several days to help our firefighters fight this fire. If you don't need to use the water, it's time to turn it down or turn it off. Turn off the sprinklers, um, but let's help the water agency and all the water retailers like Santa Rosa and everybody else, make sure they can make the best use of that water and have it available when we need it. Um, I, we have one uh, a question from an evacuee from Monterio who's asking um, whether it's possible for them to, to just go home and pick a few things up and water my garden. I'm sure there's a few, a number of evacuees that would like to do the same. What, what do you, what's the message for them? Well, I think uh, from the sheriff's office perspective, um, <clears throat> as I mentioned earlier, that uh, once we evacuate an area, we want you to stay out. We don't want you to return. Uh, we did have an isolated incident last night where a person returned to an evacuated area. Their vehicle became disabled and they had to be rescued. Um, so when you return to evacuated areas, you're placing yourself at risk you are pulling away resources, both fire and law enforcement um, to possibly rescue you um, if you get in over your head. So please do not return to your home once you've been evacuated. We have deputies in the area. We have a number of assets in the area to make sure your home is protected as best as we can. And we want you to stay out of the area. Okay, here's a question that uh, maybe for our, our local elected officials, um, what is being done to help our low income residents during this disaster? I know there's a number of services that are being provided. Would anybody like to, to, to tackle that one? Well, I think that's a, a really good question uh, to ask human services, but I know as people move into evacuation shelters, we always have human services and health services there to aid them uh, in signing up for benefits, absolutely. And I know, uh, Shirley, you have been at our evacuation centers and are, are very aware of how we work with our evacuees to sign them up for services and with the COVID precautions, they are screened for COVID and uh, uh, referred to another evacuation center if in fact they are positive. Yeah, I, I'll just add, th uh, thank you, Chair Gordon. Um, I'll just add that um, when I was in the evacuation center today over at the fairgrounds, about 80% of the people that were there were homeless and, and taking, advantage, which we were glad they're taking advantage of these wraparound services and a safe place and a hot meal and all those things. But there's more than that. There are case managers and they will, will provide assistance in terms of um, temporary housing and, and other things uh, in terms that they need, whatever it is they need. I will also say that um, a lot of our uh, low-income people are seniors 
And we have a senior task force that meets every week. And there's a tremendous amount of outreach to those seniors in terms of phone calls and putting um, information in the Mills on Wheels bags and all kinds of stuff. So um, it's kind of an all hands on deck when you have a disaster like this, because it gives you that additional opportunity of contacting people that maybe you've lost contact with. And I think um, we're doing that at the evacuation centers and also with the service providers. I would add that it's premature, but we probably will set up a local assistance center as we have done for previous fires where state and federal and local officials can be there to help you replace the documents that you may have lost, help you sign up for services that you desperately need. So stay tuned. Uh, we will probably get on that organization and let our community know where and when uh, that will be set up. Chris, I, I know it's premature. Have we talked about that at all? Uh, Madam Supervisor Chris Scottley here again. Yes, we have actually activated what we call our recovery team to begin mapping out our recovery process. This includes, of course, identifying those and what kind of assistance we need to bring to those individuals, uh, all the way down to helping individuals that may have lost everything working with insurance companies. Watershed protection is a significant concern, especially as now we have fire around Lake Sonoma, which is a significant a water source for the residents or for the county as a whole. But our goal is, is to really bring to bear all the experience, the networks, the contacts that we've developed over the last couple of years. And as much as we're gonna need it, possibly, we're gonna have that ready to go. Excellent, again, the voice of experience. We know what, we, what to do and we know potentially what you need. Very good. Um, Hey, Paul, this is Sean Cavanaugh. I'm sorry to interrupt. Yes. I have another one I have to attend, but I'd like to give a brief update that we just got on our mapping for tonight. And we're, the entire complex, we're looking at 215,000 acres tonight. Um, 200. So far, yeah, for the entire complex, that takes in all the fires and all the, all, all the counties that we have. Uh, and with that, I would like to, sorry that I do have to leave, but I would like to uh, thank, thank you for the opportunity to talk and, and uh, look forward to doing this again. Thank you, Commander. You've been a great help. We appreciate it. Thank you. Everybody take care. Yeah. Thank you, ridiculous. Commander. Um, Paul, I did see that we probably have about 117 questions. Yes. And are we going to be, obviously, we can't answer all of them tonight. How are we going to get the answers to these questions? Are we going to post them on SoCo Emergency? We, we, we'll find a way to collect all these questions and, and make sure we get um, some answers, particularly those who were emailed to us, so we can get back to those who pose those questions. So you're right, we're not gonna to get to them all, but um, many of them are uh, duplicative of ones that we've already answered. So uh, we're trying to group them together as much as possible. And I realize we're at 7.30 and I had promised many of you we'd try to wrap it up because I know you have jobs, important jobs to get back to. We'll just take a, I have a couple more here and then we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up. Um, I have one for um, uh, Congressman Huffman, if he's still with us, I, I think you, addressed it um, a little bit already, but perhaps you might um, offer some perspective that basically is given the Paul, politic. I, I believe he had to leave us. So oh, did he? We, okay, I um, saw he was and, still. And we may forward that to his office for a response. Okay, I think it was mainly about whether or not we would, uh, given the politics of our time, whether we would have the chance of seeing some federal disaster relief, but I know he's already working on that and we will get that um, uh, to him so he can answer um, as well. So um, um, I think uh, um, I think at this point, uh, the one of the, the some of the question maybe uh, we've had some questions about how can we find out about highway closures and evacuation route recommendations. I think that's particularly for those who fear they may be uh, evacuated from Fieldsburg. Does anybody want to take? Um, answer that one about evacuation routes. I guess I would ask, when would we know if Healdsburg needs to be evacuated? It sounds like our firefighters are pouring everything into the fires uh, to keep them right there. So maybe Ben e or the sheriff, can you help us with that? 
Yeah, so we talk about trigger points when it talks about um, when we're going to make decisions. And so if the fire gets to West Dry Creek Road, depending on how it approaches the road and if there is spotting at the time based on fire conditions, that would be a point where we um, issue work with the Sheriff's Department to issue the evacuation order. And, and I can certainly <clears throat> assure the people who are on tonight and listening that we will be working with CAL FIRE. We, we do not make any of these evacuation decisions in a vacuum. It's with our partners at CAL FIRE through their resources with meteorology and fire prediction that we make these decisions and we support them. So we, we have uh, our senior staff members embedded with CAL FIRE and are they are at the decision-making table uh, with CAL FIRE um, when these decisions are made. Um, so we will be there to help them. And once those uh, evacuation orders are decided, we will certainly help the city of Healdsburg conduct evacuations if that is necessary and direct people to safety. I, I think the question about which way to go is, is important. Uh, when you are evacuating, um, it's always important to evacuate away from the fire, but we also must use roads that are appropriate roads um, and have the most capacity. So we would typically want people to evacuate either north or south on Highway 101 through the arterial roads that lead to that. Um, so always evacuate away from the fire is the best advice that we can give at this time. Okay, thank you. I think what we'll do is end on um, this question. We, we've, uh, and this again is sort of a compound question from a few people, but um, it's basically this, given that this is the third major fire we've had in the last four years, please tell us what preventative steps can, can be taken that we can take to help make future fires less destructive to our community. So fire on the landscape is a uh, deal that is part of the California's ecosystem. During our lifetimes, we haven't seen the fires that have happened before us, but this is something that the fire that the state of California has seen long before we were here. So we ask that people that live in the wildland areas take the time to prepare the area around their home to keep that defensible space the way it needs to be. And also, as we learn from these fire events, we have new building standards. So a lot of the homes that are destroyed during these fire events were built prior to 2008 and didn't have the building standards in place that they do today. So any rebuild house has to have what we call fire safe building standard materials. And so it's something that it's, it's not one thing that people can do. It's, a, it's a, a list of things that people can do. And so not only defensible space and home hardening, um, but also planning to make sure that we're not putting uh, communities in, in paths where we have historic fire travel that we, we know that there may be a larger issue from downstream. We ask that um, people exercise that vigilance during fire season and be extra cautious because it's here locally, 99% of our fires are human caused. And so if people are more careful in what they're doing in the wildland areas during summertime, we'll have less fires. Like Cal Fire specifically has, has recognized that over time, um, we needed to bolster the pre-fire work that we're doing and working on that landscape uh, during winter times and springtime where conditions are not ripe, where we can get in and, and conduct prescribed burns, a low intensity burn, and working with communities to, to limit those fuels, to reduce those fuels, to create a, a healthy landscape, but then also creates a less severe fire event down the road when there is that fire during fire season. I would just add, uh, we uh, have a wealth of experience. Three of the supervisors on our board have had major fires We've all organized block captains, neighborhood captain, weekly meetings, monthly meetings with all of this information to help you. And I know that Supervisor Hopkins will organize the very same kind of organization to answer all of your questions 
and to help you be resilient moving forward. Uh, Supervisor Hopkins, can we have you end our program tonight? And I really wanna thank everybody who's taken the time uh, to lend us our expertise. I just wanna say thank you so much um, to every person who participated in this briefing. And on a final note of that last question, at the end of the day, we need more resources. And unfortunately, more resources really comes down to more money. You know, it now feels like a missed opportunity that earlier this year we had an opportunity to vote on a tax measure um, that could have provided more resources. Many of our local fire departments struggle to keep the lights on, struggle to purchase new equipment, and struggle to fund their paid positions, um, you know, to keep the engines running. And so I would say support your local fire department because I don't think that we can donate to Cal Fire, but I know that your local fire department would have, you know, a local um, organization that supports them. So, you know, support your local firefighters. That's what we need. We need to have local resources to provide that surge capacity when these incidents, um, you know, hit us. So um, thank you so much to all of our fire chiefs who are working around the clock to keep us safe, to the firefighters on the front line, and to every single person in Sonoma County who has opened up their home or their property um, for someone to park an RV or pitch a tent who is currently evacuated from their own home. Take care, everyone, and be well. Good night. Good night. Thank you all.